Hello friends. Now in today's session under safety in engineering industries, we are going to discuss about the plant layout design and housekeeping. So what exactly the plant layout design is, why it is important, why it is needed, all the things are going to be discussed and then we will discuss about the second part that is housekeeping. So let us discuss what exactly the parameters, the factors which are involved under this plant layout design as well as in the housekeeping. A plant layout is an arrangement of everything needed for production of goods or delivery of services. So it is a particular arrangement. So various plant layout designs are available and as per the need and the requirement of that particular scale of that particular company, plant layout may be changed. But it is needed, it is an arrangement of everything needed for that production of goods or delivery of services. A plant is an entity that facilitates the performance of any job. It may be a machine tool, a work center, a manufacturing cell, a machine shop, a department, a warehouse, etc. So we all know that there are a variety of plants and depending on the plant requirement, depending on the process of that plant, depending on the scale of that plant, and depending on the area available of, for that plant, everything can be flexible. So according to Ricks, the overall objective of plant layout is to design a physical arrangement that most economically meets the required output, quantity as well as quality. So every industry's goal is to gain the profit. And for the profit, we have to produce more quantity with good quality. And that is the main aim. So there are variety of definitions. So this is the definition according to the RICS. Then another definition according to JL Zundi, that is plant layout ideally involve allocation of space and arrangement of equipment in such a manner that overall operating costs are minimize. So sometimes the focus of the plant layout is to minimize the operating cost. Sometimes it is to achieve the quantity as well as the quality in economical way. So this is, this is the uh, basic definitions of the plant layout and variety of definitions may be available in the different reference books. So what exactly the objectives of the plant layout? Then proper and efficient utilizations of available floor space to ensure that work proceeds from one point to another point without any delay. Provide enough production capacity, reduce material handling cost, reduce hazards to personnel, then utilize labor efficiently, increase employee morale, reduce accidents, provide ease of supervision and control, provide employee safety and health, allow ease of maintenance, allow high machine or equipment utilizations, improve productivity to minimize the cost of production, better inter-department relationship. So these are the various objectives of this plant layout. So we have to design a plant layout in a such a way that all or most of the objectives can be achieved. So we have to increase the productivity. We have to increase the production capacity. We have to take care about the safety and health aspects. We have to take care about to reduce the accident, to reduce the hazard. We have to take care about the increase in the quantity as well as the quality and number of objectives are there. So we have to try to achieve maximum of these objectives and that is at an optimum level. So optimum plant layout design 
is a skill work. So what are the fundamental principles for this plant layout? So we know that the size, shape, location and layout of building is important. And plant should permit most efficient use of materials, process and methods. It should aim for efficient production with maximum employee safety. So again, we are focusing on the safety of the personnel first, and then we have to design the optimum plant layout on that way. So efficient production is the management objective. Safety of employee is another main objective. And on the basis of the parameters like size of that building, shape of that building, location of that building, layout of that buildings, all can decide what exactly the plant layout would be. And other parameters like material, process, methods are also to be included for designing all this plant layout. So to decide, there are number of options. One of the good option is to answer these four questions. The question one is, which centers do we have to consider? How much space and capacity required for each center? How must the space be configured at each center? And where should each center be located at within the plant? So if you answer, if you study, if you think about all these four questions and their related answer and the best answers, then you can design the plant in a smooth way. So if you decide what exactly and which is the center, then after that, you have to decide the space and capacity. If there is not enough space, productivity may be reduced because sometimes as per the availability of that uh, land, availability of that space due to some constraints, uh, due to the plot layout or due to some cities or metro city, etc. So there may be some constraints that there may be a limited space. So if the limited space is there, obviously the production capacity is also going to reduce. Too much space is expensive and may also reduce the productivity. So if you have too much space other than the required one, normally whatever the space required for that plant, we are normally thinking about to 1.3 or 1.5 multiple space for the expansion work. But if you have the land or the space beyond that, then again, you are investing more as per the requirement. So again, that can hamper the productivity. How much the space can be configured at each center? Space quantity, shape and the elements of the work center are related to each other. So on the basis of that, you have to answer this question, how must the space be configured at each center? Then the allocation of the different centers may affect productivity. So we have to finalize these things by discussing many times in a meetings, and then we have to decide where should each center be located at within the plant. So it is not a simple process. It is not a fixed process that this should be in this place only, this should be in this place only. So all these things depends on the various factors or the parameters. And that is why the plant layout can't be perfect in a particular way. Because whatever we have decided or discussed in the college level plant layout designing, and that was the ideal one. But the space requirement, criteria, the shape of that layout, shape of that plot, etc., are the various factor meter. So on that factors, these things are going to change. If you want to re-layout, so if you already decided the plant layout and then after some months, after some years, if the organization is going to change that layout, so what are the reasons to change that layout? One changes in production volume. So 
So I have already mentioned that if you want to expand your organization, if you want to expand your production capacity, then the plant layout is going to change. So that is the re layout requirement. Then the changes in processes and technology. If something is changed, so suppose that process, that may be a chemical process, that may be a physical process, whatever it may be. If the process is changed, obviously the steps in the processes, the requirement of the chemicals in the processes or other things are going to change. Sometimes with reference to the uh, latest technology development, we have to adopt some new technology. And if you adopt this technology, then also we have to relay out our plant. Then changes in the product. So if your product is changed, then we have to again change the plant layout. Suppose nowadays the plastic is banned. Nowadays the asbestos lower limit is going to reduce, already reduced many times. And then we have to substitute these elements. So asbestos sheets are uh, very common, but nowadays these asbestos sheets are or the production is replaced by some substituted um, sheets. So again, that product is changed. It means that process is going to change, the requirement is changed, the equipment are going to change, etc. So on the basis of this production or quantity changes, on the basis of this process and technology, on the basis of this um, substitution, we have to change the layout also. So on the basis of that, We have to redesign the layout. Then, what exactly uh, I have discussed in the previous slides that there are various factors. On the basis of that, plant layout can be decided. So, the factors may be materials, machinery, labor, material handling waiting time, auxiliary services, the building, future changes. So these factors are going to affect on the plant layout. So that can be grouped into different <coughs> categories and we have to focus the priority of that particular organization. Because in some of the organizations, the priority may be different. In other organizations, priority may be different. So on the basis of our organization requirement, we have to check the, all the factors and then we have to choose the optimum plant layout design. There are variety of plant layouts. Normally, the production process normally determines the type of plant layout to be applied to the facility. So there may be a fixed position plant layout. There may be a product oriented plant layout. There may be a process oriented plant layout there may be a cell layout that is mixed layout. So these plant layouts are available, can be designed in various ways like fixed position plant layout. So product stays and resources move to it. And second, product oriented plant layout means the layout that uses standardized process operation to achieve the smooth, rapid, high volume flow. So product oriented means the focus is on the product only. Fixed position means all the things are fixed only. Then process oriented means they are going to focus on the process now rather than the product. So machinery is placed according to what they do and materials go to them. And the last one is mixed layout. So process as well as products are going to mix in this layout and that is called as mixed layout or hybrid layout. Then the details of this layout systems are like product oriented 
plant layout. So this type of plant layout is useful <coughs> when the production process is organized in a continuous or repetitive way. So what is continuous flow? The correct operations flow is reached through the layout design and the equipment and machinery specifications. So that is on the continuous basis. And repetitive flow means that is assembly line. The correct operations flow will be based on a line balancing exercise in order to avoid the problems generated by bottleneck. So this is focusing on the products only. That is why it is called as product oriented plant layout. So that will be based on the allocating a machine as close as possible to the next one in line in the correct sequence to manufacture the products. So how this raw material is processed, what are the intermediates are formed, what are the intermediates are uh, converted into another intermediates and then how the final product is produced. So that is the main focus of this product oriented plant layout. Advantages of this product oriented plant layouts are reduce the material handling activities, work in process almost eliminated, minimum manufacturing time, simplification of production planning and control systems, task simplifications, and the disadvantages of this product oriented plant layout is no flexibility in the production process. So all the things which are in sequence in a particular uh, level, as well as in a particular sequence that should be fixed. So no flexibility in the production process, low flexibility in the manufacturing times also. So this raw material is going to change to the intermediate for this time only. So that time is also fixed. High capital investment. So we have to invest very high for raw material to product process. Then every workstation is critical to the process. The lack of personal or shutdown of the uh, machine stops the whole process. So in case if intermediates uh, production or the product manufacturing process have some issues or the raw material is having some issues, then we have to shut down the total process. And it is a monotonous work. So this is all about the product oriented plant layout. So this is one of the example. So that is from the bamboo as a raw material that is going to process and convert it into the paper. So the paper is the main focus that is the product. So for that purpose, you can understand this is the bamboo, then it is going to convert into the different uh, processes and then after the different processes, they are going to convert into the papers. So this is the focus that raw material to product and for this product as it is a main focus we have to fix all these things that this bamboo is going to uh, gone through this first process the second process third process fourth process with fixed time also so we can't change the sequence we can't change the time and the main focus is on the product only so operation are arranged in the sequence required to make the product. So used when the operation systems must handle to narrow the variety of products in relatively high volume. So if your company is manufacturing only one product and if you are having all the things at a fixed places, then you can go for this product plant layout. Another is process layout. So equipments that perform similar process are grouped together, together. So every machinery is having some objective to perform that operation. So that is process oriented. Used when the operation system must handle a wide variety of products in relatively small volumes. So now in the previous case, the product is only paper. Now in this case, Product may be different, but the process is same and that is fixed. And that is why it is called as process layout. 
so welding is one of the process milling is one of the process forming is one of the process turning is process and heat treatment is another process so whatever the raw materials that are to be supplied to a different process like forming milling welding turning heat treatment etc so all these processes are important rather than the product because products are changing and that is why process is important and that is why it is called as process layout then fix layout so all the things are fixed at a particular location so product is fixed at one location labor and components are moved to that location all facilities are brought and arranged around one work center so that is the shown in the diagram also that picture also that we are going to supply these raw materials we are going to supply these human resources we have to supply these material resources we have to supply the energy we have to transport these materials and then the process is going on and then <coughs> product is manufactured then product is going to sell and then we can gain the profit so that is called as fixed layout then it is a mixed or the combined layout so product layout is also there and process layout is also there so forging press so forging is operation heat treatment is operation gear cutting is operation grinding is operation but how raw material is process in a particular sequence and then it is going to finish in the finished product that is also shown that is it is called as product layout so left to right from forging gear cutting heat treatment and gear grinding and the final thing is product and the first thing is raw material so here both the things are mentioned that is product as well as the process so that is why it is called as mix or combined layout so in manufacturing concerns where several products are produces in repeated numbers a combination of product and process layout are or other combinations are found in practices so this is the um graph which shows the quantity versus number of different products so on the left hand side on y axis product layout is mentioned then it is on the below of that fixed position layout is there then mix layout and then process layout so as <coughs> with reference to this curve if you think quantity is going to reduced because on the number of different products are changing then quantity is going to reduce so at the product layout the quantity is more at fixed position layout the quantity little bit less then the quantity again less at mixed layout and it is at the list at the process layout so as we are moving from left to right it means the number of different products are changing or increasing then the quantity is also going to decrease so this is the negative graph or negative slope graph so on the basis of that you can study what exactly you want to do so if you want to increase the quantity then you have to go for the product layout if you don't want to uh, increase the quantity but repeated or the different products wants to produce then you can go for the process layout so these are the different factors in designing the a uh, factory or the plant layout so that may be a uh, adaptability expandability product and equipments employees facility and service area material handling lighting ventilation air conditioning utility that may be a uh, air water toilet steam then fire protection then security and services and maintenance so all these factors are to be considered while designing the plant layout of the factory because all these things are necessary and depending on the number of employees depending on the process depending on the product depending on the manufacturing technology etc we have to think about all these factors and then all these factors to be considered while designing the plant layout of 